This is Dr. Mark Trexler with The Climate Countdown. Today, exploring another reason we should be very careful about relying too much on an economic framing of climate change when it comes to evaluating how concerned we should be about climate change. We've talked about this before on Climate Countdown in the context of economic discounting, whereby we increasingly devalue things the farther into the future they occur. It is the implications of economic discounting that caused economist Lester Lave to note that, quote, if the world were to disappear 25 or 30 years from now, it would make no difference to economists today, unquote. But there are several reasons besides discounting to be very cautious about framing climate change conversations through an economic lens. For example, you may have heard that economic modeling suggests that climate change will have only very modest impacts on economic growth. The obvious takeaway being that climate change shouldn't be seen as that big a problem, much less an emergency. Here's the reasoning. An economic model might conclude that climate change will reduce gross domestic product, or GDP, by 10% in the year 2100. That may sound pretty substantial, but remember that the economy is assumed to be growing during the entire period between now and 2100. With a 2% growth rate, the economy in 2100 would be about four times larger than today's economy. So climate change would be reducing GDP in 2100 from 400% of today's level to 390% of today's level, barely a blip and certainly not something you'd think of as an emergency. But there are some huge problems with these numbers and with the use of gross domestic product in this way. First, economic forecasts aren't directly internalizing climate change at all. Instead, so-called integrated assessment models proxy for climate change with a few lines of modeling code. Doing anything else would be far too complicated. Second, the whole idea of long-term economic forecasting is a bit of a contradiction in terms. Unlike climate models, which reflect the workings of physical laws that hold together over time, economic forecasts decline in reliability very rapidly. Just think about oil price forecasts, which are usually proven to have been famously wrong just a decade later. Forecasting the economy in 2100 is akin to hitting a dartboard bullseye from five miles away in a windstorm. Third, GDP is well known to be a poor proxy for anything intended to represent societal welfare, in part because it leaves out all kinds of things that aren't part of the goods and services economy. GDP forecasts, for example, won't reflect the national and international security impacts of climate change, most ironic when it comes to using GDP as a proxy for deciding how seriously we should take climate change, is the fact that given how we calculate GDP, many of the impacts of climate change will actually increase GDP. And the more serious the climate change, the bigger the boost to GDP. Imagine a house destroyed by climate-induced flooding that is then rebuilt. All the materials and services associated with rebuilding that house contribute to GDP. Imagine that the house has to be rebuilt multiple times, every time contributing to GDP. Imagine the GDP boost that would result from having to move major coastal cities inland. In other words, using the future economic impacts of climate change, and a measure like GDP in particular, as a proxy for how seriously we should take climate change today, ends up being an awful idea. The much more appropriate framing is one involving risk and explicitly thinking about how much risk we're willing to take when it comes to climate change. This is Mark Trexler with The Climate Countdown. Dig deeper into this and other Climate Countdown topics at our website, climatecountdown.climatesites.net. And thanks for listening.